Hi everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to episode 5 of my vlog on building a trading system. This video is going to be a full example of using the London Open on a recent trade in Bitcoin. As a bonus, I'm going to go through my full thought process in terms of approaching the session and how I determine my bias. I get a lot of questions in the comments about determining bias, so this is as good an opportunity as any to share how I do that and hopefully that helps those people out. This trade we're going to go through today is a textbook example of the London Open and netted over a 4.5 R return. However, this trade was a little different for three reasons. Firstly, it was on a Sunday. Now, I don't normally trade the weekend, so that was the first one. The second one, it was actually the tail end of the London Open. Now, normally I'd be trading at the beginning of that session rather than at the end. And the third thing, well, you're just going to have to wait till later in the video because I'll reveal what that was all about a little bit later on. So if you're already trading the London Open or the London Kill Zone, I'd be really interested to hear your findings. Or if you're trading the London Open in a different way to me, then please let me know in the comments. I think that'd be really helpful. I'm getting a really great response to the vlog series so far, and I really appreciate all the support and comments. So if you're enjoying these videos, please give them a like as that'll help other people to find them. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you never miss a video. Now let's jump into today's video. So today's video is episode five of my vlog on building a trading system. So in today's video, we're gonna be doing a full example using the London Open. And we're gonna start off with the daily chart and specifically looking at our bias then zooming into the one hour, the 15 minute, and then the five minute, and then finally the three minute chart for when we actually do our execution. And the trading example that we're gonna be using today is using Bitcoin on the 16th of October, 2022, and that's using the London Open and generating a 4.64 R return. So this is our daily chart on Bitcoin. Now, I've zoomed out specifically just so we can get that detached view of where the market is. Now we're clearly in a downtrend and whilst this period that we're in here may be you know, a bit of a consolidation, the overall trend is still very clearly down. So if we zoom in now and we just look at this most recent price action, you can see we've had this you know, sideways consolidating range. And the interesting thing about this is the range is now starting to narrow. So you can see we painted this low here in June. We had that rally, which was, you know, tied in with that Ethereum merge and also the, the rally on the S&P. We topped out here as we came into this imbalance and then the market has pretty much sold off ever since. You can see we made a, a new low there. We traded back up, you know, into this imbalance just here. We traded up into it there. We then sold off again. Now we haven't actually traded back up into this imbalance here, but you can see if we zoom in even a bit closer, we have you know, these two candles here, which was just the most recent ones. And so this was all based around the CPI print. So we had a massive amount of volatility. The market initially traded downwards quite violently. It took out all of these stops here, even this one here. So it didn't take out the June low, but it took out this one. And then it immediately reversed and traded higher. Now, the interesting thing to me about that is we traded back up into this imbalance here. And you can see we tagged it here. We completely filled in that imbalance and then we've traded lower. So as it stands, that's the 15th. And obviously the next session we're looking at is the 16th. And so what we're trying to figure out is what our bias is. Now, people I think make this far more complicated than it needs to be. And when I'm trying to figure out what my bias is, all I'm really thinking about is where is the next draw on liquidity going to be? Now. If you simplify that down, it's only really going to be a couple of things. We're either going to be drawing towards an old high or an old low or into some kind of imbalance, either higher or lower. So we're really just looking at where the most likely draw on liquidity would be. Now, for my mind, after we had that CPI print, we took out all the stops this way. We then raced higher. We traded up into this imbalance here. So we've already now taken out effectively that sort of buy side liquidity, I guess you could call it. So we've come to the upside. So now my thinking is, is the bias is going to be bearish. So we're going to be expecting, you know, lower prices from here because we've already tagged this 
imbalance. We've completely filled that in and you can see the market has now retraced backwards. So this candle is obviously smaller. It's the weekend, so that's the Saturday. We're coming into Sunday. So we've had quite a few compressed candles on the weekend. We're not seeing the same volatility in crypto on the weekends that we would normally see. So I'm not expecting a big range, but I am expecting lower prices. Just a continuation of this move. I said not necessarily a very big one, but you know, a push down and attacking the low of that candle. So going into the session, my bias is bearish and I'm expecting lower prices because I think the previous day low is the most likely draw on liquidity. So zooming in now to our hourly chart, I'll just do a quick run through of just what we're looking at. So this is the data from the 15th. We're obviously using New York time because remember all of ICT's concepts are based around using New York time as sort of the centerpiece. So this is midnight New York time and this is the end of the Asian trading range. And so you can see during that period is when we had this, you know, real big whipsaw where we had this massive spike down the market's traded back up immediately. You can see we've taken out all of the sell side liquidity. We've now consolidated in the Asian trading range. And you can see these two candles here have painted these relative equal highs as we're going into the new session, as we come into the London Open. So there's our buy side liquidity, relative equal highs there. And we have our midnight open here on the opening of this candle as we go into the new session. So we'll just play that forward, just a few candles, and you can just sort of see what happens. So you can see the market trades above and under. So we sort of start under, we trade above, come back and we come back down to the midnight open before we trade immediately higher. So we've zoomed in now to our 15 minute chart and we're starting to zero in on that area where we wanna do business. So just running through what we've seen again. So this is that move, obviously it's more granular because we're on the 15 minute time frame. So we have these relative equal highs here, which we talked about on the one hour chart, our midnight open, so that's midnight New York time. So that's the end of the Asian trading range. You can see we've traded down above, back down under the midnight open, only just before trading higher, we've taken out this buy side liquidity, these relative equal highs. And so you can see if we paint our range from the beginning of that move to now where we are, where we've taken out that liquidity, you can see from here to here, we've got our 50% mark. So we're in a premium. That's where we want to be if we're going short. Now you'll remember going into this session, we had a bearish bias. So we're expecting lower prices. Now, the important thing to remember, if we're expecting lower prices, we actually want to see the market rally in the London session and potentially paint the high of the day in that session. And this comes back to our ICT concept based around the power of three. So if we just quickly run over that now, you'll remember we have our you know daily candle and we have it painted like this. So this is very rough, obviously. So we open here, we obviously have our high of the day we close here and we have the low of the day down there. Pretty simple. So this is obviously a down close candle. So this is what we're seeing here. So we open and we're trading higher. So we open here, we trade higher. So this is accumulation here between the open and the high. So what we have is smart money getting set here above this buy side liquidity. So they're triggering the stops here, creating that liquidity for themselves to go short. You obviously have all these buy stops being triggered here and that provides that liquidity pool for smart money to take the short position. So we're expecting this is exactly what we're hoping to see. So the market opens, it trades higher. Then what we're expecting is a push down. And at some point during the session, potentially in the Asian trading range, so at the end of the session, we might see a low and then a run into the close a little bit higher as we get that distribution phase down here as we go into the close. So this is exactly what we're looking for and what we're hoping to see in terms of our setup so far in the London Open. So I've zoomed in now to the five minute chart and I've just got a little bit of a checklist here in terms of what we've seen so far and you know what we're expecting as we drill down into our three minute chart for where we're gonna you know execute the trade and then you know exit the trade. So I've called this my picture perfect London open setup because it really is 
you know, perfect. And I've had this set up a number of times now as I've been forward and back testing the London Open method. And when it sets up like this, you know, it's got a very high probability of being successful. And, you know, now that I've seen it more than one time, you know, quite a few times now, whenever it sets up like this, I've got a high level of confidence going into the trade. So remember, our bias going into the session is bearish. So I'm anticipating that London is going to paint, it shouldn't say pain, is going to paint the high of the day, is going to paint the high of the day, and then sell off as we go into the Asian range. Now we've traded below the midnight open, which is what we need as part of our London open setup. We need to see the market go under the London open before it takes out those relative equal highs or the buy side liquidity before then selling off. So that's exactly what we wanna see. And we've taken out that buy side liquidity from the Asian trading range. Now, if we zoom into our three minute chart, we're gonna start seeing you know, the setup in a little bit more detail. So we're just gonna go through a bit more slowly. Okay, so now we've gone through a few more candles. You can see after we've taken out that buy side liquidity, we've had this big spike upwards and now we've painted a swing high. So that's what we want to see in terms of this setup starting to form in our favor. We now get this slight consolidation and you can see we're painting a swing low just there. So this is exactly what we wanna see. So if we edge forward a little bit more, okay, so you can see we get our first you know, displacement. So we get this candle down and we actually break market structure with that candle. Now, as we roll forward again, you can see we have these two candles, which gives us that big displacement we want. We wanna see price rushing away in the other direction and we get that definitive break in market structure. And you can see as we've done this, we've now created our fair value gap. So our fair value gap, when it's bearish, is a three candle formation. So you can see it's one, two, and three. And our fair value gap is formed between the low of the first candle and the high of the third candle. And so it crosses the body of that second candle. And you can see we get that imbalance or that inefficiency across the body of that second candle. So what we're looking for now is for the market to trade up into that area. That helps us get our entry. And then obviously we're hoping that it will go in our direction. Now in terms of stop placement, this all really just comes down to your risk tolerance and how much you've tested this setup and how comfortable you are with it. So the traditional way is you would use either the high of the second or the first candle, whichever one is higher. So in this instance, you would use the high of that first candle. But if you really wanted to be super conservative, you could use the swing high up here. Both are fine. You're just gonna get different risk reward profiles depending on which one you use. So we'll just play that forward now and just see what happens. Now, keep in mind what we're targeting is the midnight open. So we're looking at a reversion, you know, kind of like a mean reversion type trade. We're looking for the market to go back towards that midnight open, and that's where we're going to close out our trade. Now, in terms of how I manage the entry and the stop of this trade, I just used the high of that candle, the third candle, and I used the high of the first candle as my stop. Now, there's nothing wrong with using a market order and just waiting for price to come into this zone and then just hitting the market with that market order. I prefer to have control and just be resting. I just find it a little bit easier, I control my risk much better, I can do all my calculations. I can put my order into the marketplace, just no stress. I may not get quite as good an entry if I hit it at market, but I just find this a little bit less stressful. It's just easier to control. I can be much more precise about my position sizing and my risk management. And to me, that's one of the most important things for consistency. So I have my limit here and I have my stop here and my target is down here at the midnight open. So let's just play that forward and just see how the trade turns out. So there you go. So you can see from when we get in the trade, so from around you know 450, 
Um, by about 6.30, we're out of the trade and we've generated a 4.64 R return. So that's obviously a really fantastic result. And you can see once we went into that zone, you know, the market reacted quite strongly to this you know, grab of liquidity. And then once we went into that fair value gap, you can see we had a little bit of a consolidation here, but then we gapped and just went straight down into that midnight open. Now you'll recall from the beginning of the video, I said that there were three things that were a bit strange or a bit different about this particular trade. So the first was that we were trading on a Sunday. The second was that we were trading London Open, but it was at the very back end of the session rather than at the start of the session, which is where I'd normally be getting set in my positions. Now the third one, and I think this is a really important thing to just keep in mind when you're trading, is that the actual session didn't end up following my bias at all, even though my trade was successful. So you remember going into the session, my bias was bearish, I was expecting lower prices, I was expecting for the low of the previous day to be attacked, and we had the market set up almost exactly as we wanted. We had a rally from the open, from the midnight open, up into the London session, we had you know, what we thought was the high of the day, we had a liquidity grab that allowed us to get set, we traded that exactly as we hoped, we went from you know a premium market right back to the midnight open and generated a really fantastic return. But in the end, it ended up being a counter bias trade. So I think this is one of the things that's really important. And it goes back to my point about people overthinking the bias too much is that that's just, I guess, setting the initial framework for the way that you start approaching the market. And just because your bias is wrong doesn't mean that you can't have a successful trade. And I've certainly found that my bias generally gives me a better return or a better prospect of a return, but it doesn't necessarily mean that I can't still get a positive return if I'm trading counter to my bias. Because really you don't know if you're trading counter to your bias until after the fact. And so, you know, part of the important thing I think is just trading what's in front of you and just using the information you have. So that's why it's important to just not overthink or get too stressed about your bias. It's something that you'll get better at figuring out over time. And it's just like anything, the more reps you do, the more consistent you are, the better you'll get at it. And it's just as simple as that. I hope you enjoyed episode five of my vlog on building a trading system. This setup and result from today's video on the London Open occurs pretty frequently and you know gives a very reliable outcome. It's a key part of the system that I've been building and testing over the last few months. And as well as enjoying that process, I've really enjoyed sharing those results so far on this vlog. I'm only a few episodes in at this stage and it's just funny to think back that at the beginning, I wasn't sure if I should do it or not. And now that I've done it, I'm really happy I have. And I've just had some really great feedback and support from the people who are subscribed to my channel. So if you're on your own journey to build a trading system, I hope that today's video helped you in some way, or at the very least, gave you a little bit of inspiration about what you could do with your own trading system. If it did, it would be great if you could like this video because that'll help more people to find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any future updates. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.